the secrets of true success in life. The achievers of our time are ready through the Great Mind program on NTA Ushodu to reveal to you the secrets of their sources in their different vocations. The Great Mind is a program that can help you to formulate the real philosophy of sources through the life history and experiences of the great men and women who brought us into the meeting on the program. Good morning. It is another edition of that your program, The Great Mind. I am Bola Olayode. Here is another opportunity for you to know another great mind of our time. In person of the Commissioner for Justice, Anna Tumidiara for Shell State. What are his experiences in life? What are his challenges like? What are the prices paid by him before he arrives at the present position? Sit back and enjoy yourself as I give forth to you the details about his life. Honorable Adeni Aderele Olade was born in Kano in 1954. Though Prince Samuel Adetoro, he retired as Greek superintendent and late Mrs. Olaju Moke Olade, who was crossed to glory in February 18th this year, few weeks to her 80th birthday. Honorable Adeniyi Olade is from Ifetedo, if a South local government. His grandfather, Pa James Olade, was one of the founding fathers of Ifetedo in 1931, a town which has now become the headquarters of Ife South local government. Honorable Adeniyi Adenele Olade's grandfather and other men of value migrated from Ile Lami Royal Household, Ilo de Compound in Ile Ife to find Ifetedu. This ancient building is the origin of Olade's in Ile Ife. For his surpassing role in the founding of the town, Pa James Olade, the grandfather of Honorable Adeniyi Olade, became the valley of Ifetedo between 1945 and 1957. This old man, who is now the head of Ile Lami Royal Compound in Ilefe, witnessed the migration of Olades and others from Ilefe to Ifetedo. Ile Lami, Ilode, Ilode, Ile Lami, Love Honorable <laughs> I was born in Kano on the 16th of March, 1954. And my father, being a civil servant, was transferred from place to place. He retired as a chief agri superintendent in the Ministry of Agriculture. In 1956, we were transferred, my dad was transferred to Funtua and Malum Fashi, now in the Katsina state. And in 1958, he was transferred to Lokoja. And 1959, he went to Ida, now in the Bedway state, of course, Lokoja, the capital of Kogi state, today's Kogi state. In those days, it used to be Northern Nigeria, Western Nigeria, and Eastern Nigeria. We only had three regions in those days. And um, in 1959, he came back, he was transferred back to Lokoja. And it was in Lokoja that I started my primary school education in 1961. 
and uh, my dad was transferred in 1962 to Kotangura, where he was till 1963 uh, before he came back to Lokoja. And I continued my primary school also at the Holy Trinity School, Lokoja. Incidentally, Holy Trinity Lokoja is the oldest primary school, is the oldest educational institution in the whole of northern Nigeria. It was founded by Ajayi Crowder in 1865. So it's a thing of joy that I attended the first institution, educational institution in northern Nigeria, which uh, was Holy Trinity School, Lokoja. We came back to Lokoja, like I said, in 1964, and in 65 we were transferred back to Kano. And I then attended Baptist Day School Kano, where I took the Northern Common Entrance in 1966. And uh, one of my greatest educational feats today is that I came first in the Northern Common Entrance of 1966. That's the greatest joy to me. And I was admitted to Government uh, College Kano and uh, St. Paul's College Zaria. But I also took the common entrance here and I decided to come to Government College Ibadan, where my senior brother, Dr. Ade Wulade, deceased, now deceased, attended. So I got to Government College Ibadan in 1967, January 1967. And I was there at Government College Ibadan till 1973, having uh, done the school certificate exams in December 1971, and then the higher school certificate, which is the HSC, what we call the HSC, in 1973, June. We were the first set to do the exams in June. Because in those days, uh, it used to be between January and December. And that's why I entered Government College in January. And my school certificate was in December 1971. And the HSC started January 1972 and ended June 1973, being the first set. My childhood, fantastic. I have uh, every reason to give thanks to the Almighty God for having given me the opportunity to first and foremost the family in which I was born into my father and mother realizing the importance of education because that's the first thing and I remember vividly that um, they went to great lengths to be able to educate us uh, I had the opportunity of attending one of the best schools not only in Nigeria but on this planet the world it's something of joy honorable adeniji Owulade proceeded to united kingdom in 1974 to further his education and came to nigeria in 1984 with the university of london lab honor degree and later attended nigeria law school between 1984 and 1985 he was called to nigerian bar that same 1985 23 years ago Honorable Adeniji Adenrele Olade got married to the beautiful and supportive wife, Mrs. Banke Obolade, in 1987, two years after he was called to bar. Honorable Adeniji Obolade has worked with different notable law firms before he eventually founded his own chamber. When I left Nigerian Law School, I did my youth call in Lagos between 5 and 86 with the Sundelano and Co. And um, I did my attachment with Harry Afolabi Ladna, SAN, one of the best advocates in Nigeria. And uh, in 1988, I formed the my own chambers, Neo Oladian Associates. And in 1989 stroke 90, when uh, Babangida returned politics to Nigeria, I became a participant. I was first a legal advisor in uh, IFE South local government of the old Oyo state. And uh, 
thereafter, when SDP uh, was formed to form a government, I am happy to say one of my greatest political feats that I was adopted unopposed to stand for the Ife South 2 constituency to represent Ife South in the first Osho State House of Assembly. Honorable Adeniji Adenole Olade has been practicing politics right from his secondary school days in Government College, Ibadan, before venturing into politics in 1989. The first thing that motivated me was when one of the most brilliant boys in my class was sent away to look for his school fees. I never thought that, as at that stage, that people could really be sent away to look for school fees who could not afford the school fees. And this boy, whom I would call a boy, because we were all boys in those days, in, in my form two, 1968, to be more precise, anytime he was sent away, he will come back a week before the exams. And whenever he came back, he would always stop the class. Somebody who had been sent away to look for his fees, who had been away for so long, and who would come back and still top the class. That was when he changed me. And the question, as a young boy growing up, why should he be this unlucky to have been sent away to look for his fees? Why should he be so lucky to have been born into a poor home? That was when I could differentiate between riches and poverty. Because as a young boy growing up, at Government College Ibadan, there was no difference. We were all students from various backgrounds. Nobody cared where you came from. Uh, people from rich homes, people from poor homes, but we didn't care. But to have got into a stage where People, stood, uh, my classmate had to be sent away, was of concern to me. And he always came first because, and that continued for a, a couple of years. And uh, that had an impact on me. And I remember when I was getting to Form 3, the impact was that how could you have a society, how could you have a system that will throw out this situation? Some people can be in school, and some cannot be in school. It's not the young boy's fault where he was born into. But if you say you have a society, you have a system, that system must produce a mechanism where the society as a society must a student. That was the first feeling I, I had then. That the fact that he could be this brilliant it would indeed be wasteful if he did not have the opportunity of continuing. And that was the fire that was then born into this young uh, man, then a boy. And that was when I think I can remember that the political thing started in me. Honorable Adeniyi Owolade was the deputy speaker in the first assembly of Osho State. In 1992, when the House commenced, I became the Honorable Deputy Speaker on the 11th of May, 1992, the position I occupied till 17th November, 1993, when Sania Bacha took over the reins of government. Honorable Adeniji Adenrele Owolade has served as Commissioner respectively in two ministries. He was once the Commissioner for Earth and later became the Commissioner for Works and Transports. All the glory goes to the Almighty God. The good Lord has been merciful on me. I was made the Commissioner for Health on the 17th of June 1999 when I was sworn in. And um, I knew then that it was all a matter of building a team. That if you have a team spirit, if you have a team together, you create a team spirit. Uh, and you work together as a team, you'll go places. 
it was a great challenge for me, and I relish in challenges. And one of the challenges there was the fact that I was to start a free health program, a free health program that did not have any data. Very difficult. But of course, the first thing I did was to call the doctors together, my doctors, as I referred to them in those days, and uh, fantastic human beings, I must say. I still remember how we were able to draw the policy of the free health, the comprehensive thing, which was a, a, a seven-man committee headed by Dr. Nosiru, who was then the director of medical services. They did a human's job because within two weeks of non-stop, of maybe putting 12 hours together daily, for two weeks, we were able to put on paper how we want the free health program to be restructured. And of course, we had to put a, a memo to council, which I had to go to an executive council to, and we did that two or three times. That's three weeks. And then we were able to put in place that on October 1st, 1999, the free health program will commence. Uh, the doctors, the nurses, the pharmacists, this was novel to them, a free health program. And they all did marvelously well. Part of what I shared, a part of my experience, the importance of teamwork. Teamwork. Uh, you don't have to be a boss, you know, a bossy type of person, you know. Uh, once you give people the confidence to, to bring out ideas, we used to brainstorm a lot on concepts. And uh, I've been able to learn a lot from there. And uh, I must say that I relish and I'm very, very proud of what we did in the Ministry of Health. I still remember vividly that our free health program, which we started then in 1999, was the most comprehensive free health program of any government in Nigeria. Because it was free health across board. We didn't differentiate old age or young age. Everybody was involved. And when I got to the Ministry of Works, also another professional ministry, uh, that concept which I, de I had developed from the Ministry of Health continued that's that concept of teamwork. To God be the glory also, because uh, during my period in the Ministry of Works, we were able to rehabilitate, to reconstruct road network of almost 1,000 kilometers, all within two and a half years. And when we consider the amount of money we expended, to God be the glory that we're able to do that. But we're only able to do that because of this teamwork. July this year, as part of the reward for his hard work and dedication, Oli Badin Yadin Rele Owolade was appointed and sworn as the Commissioner for Justice and Attorney General for Ocean State by Governor Olagun Soye Onyinola. It is scripturally stated that a wise son always brings joy to his father. Honorable Adeniji Adenrele Owolade has really brought joy to his father, Prince Samuel Adetoro Owolade. It's very long to have a boy like me, and we are happy today that he's more like within the family. Because after many years, I've had my first son, Dr. Wuladi, now of blessed memory. We God provided the Wuladi. He was born at Kano. We had 
guy is glad to do that. He's leading the family. How do family members, friends, some political associates of Honorable Adeni, Adenele Ola, they view in? Right from my child and the family, we knew that it would be an achiever. Because I could remember when we were young, my Matana grandfather used to call him my good lawyer. And thank God I became a lawyer after about 30 years that the old man prophesied. I'm very close and I always admire him as my brother because he's very straightforward, very honest person. He's not a two best man. Honorable Yolabi is a politician. And uh, somebody that have a vision, and somebody that carry along his people, he does his thing with the concept of his people. I think it's, he used to liberate me. I can say he's a liberator. He used to tell me what to do, and he have to put us on the right way about the politics. And he always telling me that what must be at your First thing in your mind is you must consider your people before even say before your ambition or before you are what you are aspiring for in life. That is why I adore him and that's why I take him as my political mentor. New York Walla Day has been a friend. And we've been together, we were together in the House of Assembly. Particularly we are the first set of uh, Osun State of Assembly. That was nineteen ninety two. And then during the period it had been very good. In fact, he spearheaded me becoming a speaker of the House of Assembly, which I lost by one vote. And then we had to impeach the other principal officers. I spearheaded it to impeach the deputy speaker then and uh, installed him as deputy speaker. And during the, the tenure, he, as, speaker, as deputy speaker of the uh, State Assembly then, he had performed very well. And we have confidence in him, we trust him, and we entrust so many things on his, into his hand, and he did well. Honorable Niyo Olade is a responsive and responsible gentleman. He's a politician, very hardworking, very polite, and very loving. Honorable Olade Niyo Olade is a passionate and a compassionate politician, a community leader. He loves his people and uh, he always strives to get the best for them. He, he's always concerned about service, service to his people, selfless service. And uh, that is no wonder he's been so popular and uh, acceptable among his, uh, among his people here. Yeah. He's a very brilliant politician. Um, you see, whatever, whatever issue he believes in, he, he goes for it. And he will put all his best to defend his, uh, his position and stand by it. It's a very hardworking person. Highly responsible. Unassuming, you can see, you'll be surprised most times to see the way he mixes uh, uh, with the people around, and you'll be surprised. He's, uh, he's a leader by excellence. This is the vision of Honorable Adeni Adenwele Obolade. Human beings can make ambitions, you can have your ambition right in you. But the most important thing is the will of the Almighty God. You see, I am one of those that believe strongly that the Almighty God has ordained different people for different things to do. Yes, you may aspire. 
You may say, I want to be this. It's only when it's crowned by the Almighty God that you can get anywhere. So I have put my entire future in the hands of the Almighty God. I have rededicated myself to serve my people diligently. So Niyu Olani is all about service. I am prepared to serve the good people of Osho State to the best of my ability. And so, in what capacity and status, that is for the Almighty God. But I'm prepared and I'm ready to go. Honorable Adeni Yewolade, how is this piece of advice for the youth? Be focused. You have to be educated. You have to have the right education. You can't toy with education. That is your certificate to go and be anything. Thirdly, and probably most importantly, consult with your God. He's a wonderful God. He's so merciful. Ask Him. If you are hardworking, which I subscribe to all the youth, you can't get anything by not being hard, by not, by not working hard. There's no easy way. There's no easy way. You must relish in challenges. Once you work hard, if you're in secondary school, if you're in school, you have to work hard to be able to succeed. If you're in university, you have to work hard to succeed. Sincerely speaking, there is no short way to hard work. In whatever you are doing, be committed and dedicated. There is no short course to greatness in life. On that note, we are ending this week edition of the program, The Great Mind. Join me next week, God willing, as I bring to you another great mind of our time. Today, we are blessed.